politics and power. It should be self-evident at this juncture that the series of programs called Politics and Power is a universal approach at understanding human behaviors, combative, competitive human behaviors under the banner called politics, which is what really politics is, and not necessarily the bickering that goes on during electoral campaigns. This is clear by now. In fact, you should also be aware that this program has nothing to do with partisan sectorial color politics, but it is instead a general understanding of what we do, when we do, how we do, how things are done, in a way that we understand how political players get on and why they get on in those particular ways. In the last program, we spoke of political culture and the changing of political culture, the changing of beliefs and behaviors and thinkings and ways of doing things and looking at things. We posited the view that political culture can and do change. Such change happen quicker in certain places and slower in other places. It depends on the heightened awareness of the people in that particular area at that particular epoch, that particular period in time. So yes, political cultures can and do change and have changed over time. So too have political regimes. There are different regime types and we will discuss these in future programs. But we are basically setting the groundwork upon which this program is built and will grow from. For instance, in future programs, we'll discuss democracy, authoritarianism, totalitarianism, communism. We'll discuss voting rights. We'll discuss human rights, civil rights. We'll discuss the state. We'll discuss nations, and so on and so forth. So we are pretty much still in the formative stage of our program, setting that groundwork. So when we build, there'll be strong rationale for the discussions that we are now making and that we'll continue to make. So just to solidify our understanding of political culture before we branch off into different aspects of politics. Political culture is a heightened awareness of self, of purpose, of identity, of history, of symbols, of designs. All of these dictate what a particular political culture is built around. And the political players are not the one who determine the culture. It is the people who determine the culture and the players fall in line with the culture. And when I say political players, I mean the people who are involved in politics. Well, we are all involved in politics, but those who present themselves as candidates and as officers and as advisors, as scholars and the like. So you could be considered a political player because you vote, you share ideas, you present yourself as a candidate worthy for election, or you criticize the candidates. We are all players in this grand scheme of political affairs. There's a particular scientist who says that we are all politicians. I would not go as far as to say that because this could offend a particular person or a particular set of individuals. But in the true context of politics, in fact, we are. By the mere vote, by the fact that we support or not support, or even staying away from the process, meaning that you are part of the process. Because you, by virtue of the fact that you have stayed away, it means that there is something to stay away from. The final note on political culture is that the concept of political culture is the psychology of the nation in regards to politics. That's generally in one sentence, what political culture denotes. Various nations may adopt similar constitution, but they do not have the same political culture. So the constitutions of the Caribbean islands, those former colonies of Britain, pretty much share the same constitutional syntax. But with that said, each country has its separate sovereign political culture. I believe this about does it in terms of our discussions and understanding of political culture. We'll continue to discuss the theories in the next program. Politics and power.